Sophie Turner recently talked a lot about Sansa, her character's past, future, and motivations, and I think she's wrong. Real quick, if you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon with your donation. Not only do you help this channel, but you also get early access to videos, videos, and podcasts that no one else does besides those that support me on Patreon, access to all my book clubs, and my Facebook-only Patreon group page. Link in the video description and comment section down below. So like I said in the intro, Sophie Turner has been doing a lot of interviews recently and has been opening up about her character Sansa, both the character's past, the final season, the future of the character, and so on. And I actually want to start with what I consider to be the most interesting. I know she said a little bit of this before, but she talked about the future reign of Sansa in the North and how she thinks it will go. So she shared in an interview, No wars, no battles. I see her leading until she's very old. I don't see her getting married or having children. I think it would be a democratic kind of kingdom. She'd die of old age, very happy. Now, I'm not one of those people that feel like you have to get married or have children to have a fulfilling life. Honestly, I think the people that say you don't understand true love until you have children are just absolute twats. Generally, selfish twats, too. It's weird how that works out. But I do feel sad that Sophie has been so adamant since the finale that Sansa will never marry, will never know another love, never have another man in her life, and won't have children. I personally still think that Sansa could heal and have another partner in her life. Doesn't have to be a man and she doesn't have to have children, but I don't know. I'm hoping she can at least get a little loving on the side. As for no wars and battles while Sansa rules, well, yeah, no shit. You control the North. Your brother controls the rest of the six kingdoms, and John pretty much is running the wildling show. Who's gonna attack you? I mean, besides people within the north, but they've had enough of bloodshed, and they're gonna follow you. Who could start some fights? The Iron Islands and Dorne, because they absolutely should rebel after the Bran election scene. Dorne should be like, fuck you, and so should the Iron Islands. But I could see still... Sansa never having to have the North fight again, because even if people have a, a civil war against Bran, she can be like, dude, that's your fucking problem. I'm a, I'm a cold ass bitch. I'm staying up in the North. Good luck to you. Also, Sansa, I hope really at some point in your rule you did behead Lord Glover. Fuck that guy. Lord Glover wishes us good fortune, but he's staying in Deepwood Mont with his men. House Glover will stand behind House Stark as we have for a thousand years. Isn't that what he said? Interestingly, Sophie also shared Sansa's turning point and how she became the smartest person Arya has ever met. And that turning point was Ramsay and the point where she was captured by him and tortured by him. So Sophie believes the time Sansa was imprisoned by Ramsay at Winterfell was the point where Sansa took everything she had learned through her other captors and became who she was, Sophie said in an interview. I think she always had that strength, always, but that's where she either decides to give up or get away. The moment she does that, the resilience that has always been in her is kind of ignited again. It's the first time the audience can really taste that. I don't think she can hide it at this point. So she was always that strong, she was hiding, and then finally she was pushed to a point where it was, that inner strength was reignited. However, Sophie also shared that Sansa's imprisonment and torture by Ramsay is why she's so shitty towards Danny, and why even though Danny gave up pretty much everything to help the North, Sansa, you, this is according to her why she was nasty to Danny. So Sophie said, Showrunners David Benioff and Dan Weiss and I spoke about it a lot. The ways people are blinded by power. Sansa can spy that in anyone. She's seen too much. She can't be too vigilant. We always thought she had her head screwed on maybe the best of all the characters. I think that ties a lot into this scene too. And a lord of Storm's End who will be forever loyal to you. See? You're not the only one who's blind. We 
We definitely see someone manipulating others to get more power or control, and Sansa seeing someone do that again around her, especially in her home, just pisses her off. Which, rightfully so. As for Sansa having the best screwed on head out of all the characters, I just can't agree with that. The whole point of Sansa is she is naive and she's powerless and she's an unreliable narrator. She's not supposed to be the character with the her head screwed on the best. That's just feels like favoritism, which we know D&D do favor Sophie and both Sansa, so that makes sense. Sophie did talk about that to a certain extent, though, in an interview, so she kind of compared how naive Sansa was to her also being naive and unexperienced when it came to acting in Game of Thrones. So she said, I started when I was 13 and Sansa was 11, I think. She's been my whole life. Sansa's been thrown in the deep end in this world she doesn't understand. She doesn't have any perspective other than a kid looking through rose-tinted glasses. That was kind of me. Then being around Peter Dinklage and Lena Headey and all these incredible actors, Charles Dance, I started to find my footing. Sansa did the same thing, learning these politics and how to fit in, absorbing all this information from all these great manipulators. Sansa learns to hide her feelings to absorb all this information from them, but keep it hidden while they still think she's innocent. That I do buy. I really love Sansa's line. I'm a slow learner. But I do learn. I'm a slow learner. It's true. But I learn. Also, Tyrion points out in the final season, people underestimating her still and thinking she's innocent is why she's gotten the upper hand on them. We both survived. Many underestimated you. Most of them are dead now. So yeah, I can definitely see that. I, I wish the change wasn't so abrupt and she wasn't such a, a snarky asshole in the final season, but I definitely do like Sansa's growth and I expect us to see something very similar in the books, just <laughs> more even out and less I'm a snarky bitch and more of a I've absorbed all this information and now I know how to work the board without just being awful. Because I'm totally down for Sansa being queen in the north in the finale of A Dream of Spring. That would be pretty cool. And I feel like George is going to have it done in a clever way. Here's what I'm interested in. I want to go back to Sansa saying she'll never marry, never have kids, and that the north is going to be a democratic rule. Does that mean just like with the Six Kingdoms when Bran dies, they have an election for the next king in the dragon pit? They're going to do that in the north because... I just don't see how that's gonna work really well. I just think it would be absolutely fascinating to watch though, given how much the North doesn't remember, I can see utter chaos breaking out when Sansa dies and a new house tries to be king. You know eventually some asshole will not want to give up power and give it to their children. I just don't see anything but shenanigans coming from this. Oh, also Sophie admitted that she was getting a little defensive about the final season when people were being disrespectful about it so really quick she said the fans are incredible and so loyal and we love them because of the fact that they're so so passionate i cannot fault them there but when people were saying that there was no effort that the writers were terrible the most effort was put into this final season we were shooting for an incredibly long time nearly 11 months we did the most night shoots anyone has ever done i think i felt a little defensive and I think I'm entitled to feel like that. Which I totally understand where she's coming from, but at the same time, just because you worked really hard doesn't mean that there wasn't lazy writing. I, I feel like that's going to be a really hard lesson for her to learn. The work actors put in doesn't necessarily mean that something wasn't lazy. But what are your thoughts about these interviews and what Sophie said about Sansa? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you like the idea of Sansa never marrying again and never having children? Or do you think Jon will secretly sneak down from beyond the wall every once in a while? And since he's only her first cousin, they give each other sweet, sweet loving from time to time. Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section down below. Oh,